the next year's team. Yeah. Commitment to guide to each other and feel. Yeah. Yeah, I understand what they're doing, Lord, in this family. Lord, we have commitment to all. Stir their love for each other as it grows each day for the rest of their lives. Mm. We'll bless them, Lord, as they go on their honeymoon, their safety, as they come back home, help them, Lord, to, to get to the marriage in a great way, Lord, to make sure you're always part of it. Mm. And Lord, you know, the marriage will be a good marriage. And when we're all sitting down the road, we will thank you for that, Lord. So bless this time today, Lord, to pray that everybody go well with Bless those who are coming in and safe and travel. And Lord, we thank you for the good days and the good weather. And we thank you for all you are and all you've done for us. Because you are the sinner and Jesus Christ is the one we want to honor today in his name. Amen. Amen. Shall we thank you for the day? We thank you for all you do for your mercy. We thank you for the day you give us your service. You are a member of God's will. You are a member of God's will. You are a member of God's will. Shall we thank you, Daddy, for the day you give us your love? Shall we have the love that we love you because you first love God's will? I pray that you bless us today. I pray that you walk with us. God, Lord, you're a godly man. You serve a part of your life. Thank you, Lord. You carry yourself. You always have a reason. You put us together. We
stand for bitches on man's empty prey. You're my inheritance now and on your way. You and you only the first in my heart. I can't have heaven, my treasure. You are. <coughs> Thank you for coming today to be a part of this very, very special occasion. Your being here is an encouragement and a blessing to them, and we would ask that you continue to pray for them as they begin their life together. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you today for this wonderful evening you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for great weather. Lord, most of all, for this gathering for Hunter and Margaret as they begin a life together with you. Lord, we thank you that you are here with us today. As Christ did his first miracle at the wedding of Cana, you have blessed us with your, with your presence. And Lord, you've blessed us even more by giving us the institution of marriage. We take two people who are so different and put them together, bind them together as one, with you as the head of the home. We pray your blessing on the ceremony. We pray, Lord, for your, not only the ceremony, but for the things that are going on afterwards for the food that you provided, all you've done for us, Lord, every day. But, Lord, most of all, we just thank you for Margaret and Hunter, for what you're going to do in their lives as they continue their life together, Lord, with family and all that going on. We'd like to thank you, Lord, that you are the sovereign God. You brought them together. We ask your blessing upon this time. In Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen. From beginning to end, the Bible is a love story. There we read of God's love for his people, of a love that sent Christ to the cross, of a redeeming love for the sinner, and of abiding love for the redeemed. In the beginning, when the Lord God formed man from dust to the ground, he placed him in the garden. He also created woman to be alongside him. He didn't create another male for Adam, but a female. It was God's, <clears throat> God was concerned with the companionship he would have made another male to be alongside him, but he knew woman would be one that would perfect Adam, to work alongside, to serve, and provide intimate relationship with him. God leads us to our life's companion. Abraham prayed that God would find a wife for his son Isaac, and God answered that prayer. Scripture says Isaac loved 
Rebecca. We believe that God has guided Hunter and Margaret to this moment, has blessed their love and brought them together to enter into the holy union of marriage. Who gives this woman to this man to be married? Stay forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death do us part. As God is my witness, I give you my promise. Margaret, if you repeat this after me. I, Margaret, take you, Hunter, to be my husband, to have and to hold this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, until death do us part, as God is my witness, I give you my promise. In Ephesians 5, we have a passage of scripture that I believe best sums up God's standard of what marriage should be. Um, Ephesians 5, beginning in verse 22, we have a verse that gets a lot of flack sometimes from our ladies. However, it starts off with the wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Um, there are three reasons, I think, why this catches some, some flack from some of our females. Number one, we don't like to be told what to do. Uh, we are naturally the, the, the smartest person in the room. Uh, second, I think women sometimes feel inferior with that word submission. And third, we've seen numerous poor examples of what a good husband should be like. Now, I can't change the first one. However, the, the second one, I think, can be corrected. Um, in this passage, God is not telling us that, that, that a female is less than a man. Absolutely not. They're both created in equal standing and equal rights before a holy God. One's not superior over the other one. However, in this passage, we do see distinguishing roles. The woman's role is to submit to her husband as a way of worship to the Lord. And if we think of it in that perspective, it changes things. Not that we're, uh, I guess, taking away from who we are, but that we have a chance to worship God in a more intimate way than we ever have before. Now, Margaret, I want to encourage you that you'll never do that well without a strong relationship to Christ first. You submit to the Lord first, and then Hunter in a second fashion. Now, however, Hunter, I'd love to tell you that you have it easy, um, but we don't. Um, if we pick up in verse 25, I want you to hear how the Lord speaks to you. Husband, love your wife as Christ has loved the church and give himself up for her. I, uh, I think this is the, the reason why we have it weightier is because in life we have many bad role models of what a husband should be. But however, we see the standard that God has given for all of his people to love their bride as Christ has loved the church and gave himself up for her. Your love for Margaret is to mimic Jesus' love for us. I know it's a high calling, but I want you just to hear what Jesus has done for us. Jesus set aside his glory set aside his majesty, all that was due him, well-deserved for every bit of it. He enters a sin-infected world for people who didn't love him. In his pursuit of his sons and daughters who would end up killing him, he died the death that we should have died for sins that we committed, all for the glory of God the Father and to redeem his people. When we begin to cast our eyes on the love of Jesus, it becomes easy to submit to that king. And as, as Margaret, as you model your love for Hunter and as you love him, it becomes easier to submit to his leadership as head of the household when we remember Christ's love for us. As you look through this passage, verses 26 will say <clears throat> that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so he might present the church in himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or, or any such thing that she might be holy without blemish. Jesus leaves his church, his bride, spotless by a sacrifice. 
And that continues as uh, through the proclaiming of his life, through the carrying of the gospel through all the world. Verse 28 through 29, we'll read like this. In the same way as husbands should love their wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Jesus sets the stall, the, the tone for all husbands and providing for them and meeting their needs. And your love will be tested, Hunter, by the way that you continue to love and take care and provide for Margaret. Mm -hmm. Verse 31 begins to pick back up into where we really stand today. It says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Jesus goes to Genesis chapter 2 and pulls this from the creation event. And he has it stated that, again, that this is going to be a, a pledge that's going to supersede all other bonds of love that you ever have known. And Paul will look in the next verse in verse 32 and say it's a mystery. It's a profound thing because it refers to Christ and his love for the church. The sacrificial submission and love that you have for one another and the sacred covenant that you both are willingly and willfully entering into is extraordinary because of the love of which you mirror us. That Jesus loves us. He never divorces the church. He never gives up on his people, irregardless of how bad we may have blown it. His love is a model for which we examine all marriages. You may exhibit his love in your lives and pledge yourselves to him first. All bonds of love will pair in comparison to your love for him until the day the true groom calls his true bride to be home with him. I want to encourage all married couples here today. Would you mirror your life and your marriage around the love that we have for Christ. May your spouse first see the love the Lord has uh, for her or for him in your life, in your relationship with him. May you love your spouse as Christ gave himself for the church. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 says this, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their efforts. For if either fails, his companion can lift him up, but pity the other one falls without another to lift him up. Also, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one person alone keep warm? If someone overpowers one another, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Uh, today, Hunter and Margaret have chosen to braid three strands together into a single cord, each strand having a significant meaning. The gold strand representing God and his majesty. The red strand representing the groom and his life. The white strand representing the bride and her life. And braiding these three strands together, Hunter and Margaret have demonstrated that their marriage is more than a joining of two lives. It's a unity with God as well. They have chosen to allow God to be at the center of their marriage, woven into every aspect of it. Today, as Margaret and Hunter uh, braid the, the knot together, they are signifying there will be one man, one woman, connected to one God. It was God who taught us love, and by keeping him at the center of your marriage, he will continue to bind you together as one throughout your marriage. Your grace will never be forgot your mercy all my life will be my soul's forever so my soul
having this kind of love in your hearts, you have chosen to exchange rings as a sign and seal of vows you're making today. <coughs> <coughs> Though small in size, these rings are large in importance and significance. Made of precious metal, they remind us that love is not cheap nor common. Indeed, love costs us dearly. Made in a circle, their design tells us that love must never come to an end. We must keep it continuous. As you wear these rings, whether together or apart for a moment, may they be constant reminders of these glad promises that you're making today. We'll take that ring hunter and place it on Margaret's left hand. And repeat this promise after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. As it encircles your finger, may it remind you always that you are surrounded by my enduring love. I honor you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Take this. Place it. Under his left hand. And repeat this promise after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. As it encircles your finger, may it remind you always that you are surrounded by my enduring love. I honor you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You have come before us and before God and have expressed your desire to be husband and wife. You have shown your love and affection by joining hands. You've made promises of faith and devotion to one another and have sealed these promises by the giving and receiving of these rings. I therefore pronounce you husband and wife. May God bless you and keep you and give you his peace. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Hunter, may kiss for bride. <laughs> where you go, I'll go. And where you stay, I'll stay. Your people will be my people and your God's. My God, may this be your commitment to each other today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Hunter John Rhodes.
For a minute, I forgot that I'm older. I want to dance with you right now. Did you look as beautiful as ever? And I swear that everything get better. You make me feel this way somehow. I think I 